So these top tier customers, right, get free access, whether it's um, Apple Music yeah. or whether it's Disney. Um, what's the payoff for you? What are you seeing? And are, are there more partnerships coming? I think, first of all, the model we have is uh, on, on the Disney Plus and, and, and Apple Music. You, you get it for free from the beginning, and then we turn them into to paying customers. And, of course, that model is that we have a lower cost in the beginning, then we get right. something back when they get paying. Right. And we now know how many of our customers will be turning around because we have so good understanding of our customer base. Who wants it? So that's, that's how we do it. And, of course, yes, it might be more, but I will do it exclusive. I will only do it with brands that I really believe that is sticking up to our values as well as for our customers. Are you seeing the payoff yet, though? I mean, Apple pay- Music, definitely, because that was a year, year ago since right. we launched. Disney Plus is, is still in the infancy, even though we're extremely happy with it. And, but you should talk about Disney about it, because they are the ones speaking about it. But we from Verizon is also very happy. Talk about the Amazon deal. We talk so much about the cloud and Amazon Web Services. What does that enable you to do? This is extremely exciting. I mean, I spent or we spent almost one and a half year with Amazon to do this. So just to understand what we're doing with Amazon, we are bringing the cloud service out to the edge together with 5G in order to give super low latency, enormous throughput for applications being developed by developers. This can not be done. This is the first time in the world where actually we have seen that partnership. Amazon couldn't have done it by themselves because they don't have wireless 5G. Verizon couldn't have done it by itself because we are not in cloud service. We don't have cloud software. The combination of us can create something that is so transformative that today you basically, as a developer, you can click on our first 5G Edge site in Chicago and start developing an application for 5G with low latency and enormous throughput. Of course, it's a transformative. And of course, we have one site right now. Think of us have hundreds of them, maybe thousands of them over time, where you have big data centers, maybe less than 10 in the country. We can then give 5G experiences of low latency. And low latency is basically you ping up to the internet and get the the facts back. Uh, Autonomous cars, uh, real-time AR, VR, uh, artificial uh, sort of intelligence, all of that can be at the edge. And we have just seen the start of it. So that's why we're so excited about this partnership and what we launched in Uh, No, uh, December, 3rd of December last year. Let's talk about 5G. We spend a huge amount of time talking about it, I feel like, every day. That's Uh, good. Everybody around the the ecosystem. There is a sense that the move from 4G to 5G is much different than from 2G to 3G and even 3G to 4G. How much of the promise has been delivered so far and what's to come and what's the timeline? I think that we are, I mean, remember, when the design of, of 5G was done, uh, the idea was this is a wireless technology for industries and society. It was never thought, it was of course thought that the consumers would get the benefit, but from the beginning was how can you take away all the cables in the world and have the same performance as you have with cables, being much more agile, having new ways of doing it. That was the idea. So of course, a lot of the things when I think about 5G is that 4G has basically two capabilities, speed and throughput. The phone is better every time you get a a new generation. In 5G, it's eight currencies. You can battery optimization, low latency. I mean, just one of the currencies that today I can connect 100,000 devices per square kilometer. Tomorrow I can do one million. And it's not, never going to be one million people on a square kilometer. So it's done for devices, talking to devices, optimizing flows for industries. So where, do, where are we? I mean, the plan was actually to, to come out 2020. We came out 2018. I think we're ahead of the game, but still, from a consumer market, we're just now starting to, to massively uh, come into it. And as we have said, this year we're going to launch 25 d phones this year. We think that our 5G is so different from others because the performance on our millimeter wave 5G is just extraordinary. Today, I get two gigabit per second in my phone. If you have a 4G phone, which you probably have over there, you probably have 40 to 50 megabits per second on Verizon, which is the best network in the country. And here we're getting two gig. You cannot even imagine how much faster that is. Right. You still do have some media properties, though. Yes. Yahoo, uh, HuffPost, AOL. 
What's the strategy there? Does that grow? Does it expand? Organic acquisition? What happens there? I can go to a customer and say, hey, I'm not only can sell you connectivity in 5G, I also have an advertising platform. So suddenly, I have synergies from my sales point of view. I have technology synergies because many of the Ryzen Media Group's engineers is working with 5G today. So suddenly, I feel that this is really fitting into a strategy that we have. But uh, we're happy with assets. Up to the third quarter, they had done a fantastic job from coming from double-digit decline to very, very small decline. So they are doing a good job.